So hi guys, let's have a look at how to lay out a book using Affinity Publisher <clears throat> version 2.1 on the iPad. The basics. Now starting a new book, um, there are a few things that we could point out, but simply put, what are the initial uses? Travel journals, guest books, fiction, non-fiction? What you need determines where you start book size, number of pages, number of illustrations, things like that. Obviously, you need to put all this together before you actually get going. But when you're ready to create your new document and you're using the iPad version of Affinity Publisher, let's look at a good place to start. And we're going to start very simply in this exercise with a 6-inch by 9-inch portrait style book, creating our own preset for it to start with. We can then use this over and over. So open Publisher and tap New, New Document. Select letter size from the print presets. For an ebook, you start with a web preset, but we're not using ebooks, so I'll probably only mention that once or twice more from now on. We'll look at ebooks in another example. For now, we're doing print, and we need to modify the letter size print preset. But first, before we do that, we need a new category. So tap the category option, that's that circle you saw at the bottom, and give it the name Books. Press OK and the preset category Books is created. And there it is down there. You can see that list. That's There's devices, architectural, there's print, press ready, all of those, your books category will appear at the bottom. But you can see we've still got letter selected and it's all the same sizes in there as a letter. So we're going to change that right now. Go back to the print preset and select letter. With letter selected, tap the preset renaming tool. Now that's the bottom one down there. Remember you tap the one just to the right of it to create the new category, Books. Now we're going to tap the one right on the left and rename the letter one to our own preset. With letter selected, tap the preset renaming tool, that option there in the yellow circle. In the pop-up window, name your preset 6x9 Novel. Then select the category you just created called Books for it live, to live in. Now you can see Books is in a panel of its own there and it's got a right and left arrow key. Go down the options, down the list of publication types until you reach the one you just created called Books. So you've got 6x9 Books, then tap OK. If you just leave letter where it is and you change its name to 6x9 and press the OK without putting it in books, it will put it in the print section and quite possibly have renamed your letter preset in the process. So make sure you find your preset category and put it in there. Sorry if I'm repeating that, but it's quite important. So now let's go right ahead and set up your preset. <coughs> tap General. Make sure you tap General. It may be selected, but make sure you tap it just to make sure it is. Select Inches as the document units if it's not done already. Set the width to 6 inches and the height to 9 inches. Set it to 300 dpi, 12 pages, and default master. Take your time working through these options till you find them and set them to what they should be here. Select Facing Pages and set transparent background to off. Do not tap OK just yet. Now, tap margins and bleed. That's up the top there. Set the margins to 0 0.75 for the inner and 0 0.5 for the outer, and the top and bottom margins are 0 0.333. Set the bleed to 0 0.125 all around, except on the inner edge, set that to zero. 
Do not tap OK just yet. Next, tap the redraw icon. That's that little sort of um, circular arrows at the top there. After a moment, that little icon will disappear. All your new settings are now fixed in place in your new preset called 6x9 Novel. If you need to change something, remember to tap the redraw button because if you don't tap the redraw button, your changes won't be fixed into that preset. Now, the preset. Setting up your preset first avoids accidentally modifying the originals. So you're now ready to create your new book as your master preset is done. You can come back to that preset and use it for your sequels, your series, any book that's a 6x9 size now, and there it is ready to go. So let's go ahead and lay out the book interior. Select your new preset, tap OK, and your initial layout is created. And it will start up looking like that, with the pages showing you there, page 1 and page 2 and 3, and facing page mode, but page 1 is highlight. So we're going to refine all this, starting with the master pages. Now here you can see the initial three pages. We're going to use the selector at the top of that panel to select the master page the master panel. So you can see where it says pages, tap the right arrow key or just tap pages, you'll see masters appear and select masters. Select the master panel and tap the master A thumbnail that appears on the right there. You can see it says masters. Now tap that little panel and in the left hand side the master page will show in the main panel showing the preset margins. These don't print out, by the way, as they're only guides. I like to pinch in the page a little so I can see the whole layout. Looking carefully, you can also see the bleed guidelines. Now, saving your document first, here's what we have to do. Tap the arrow to go back to the Live Documents opening screen, select the sandwich icon, select Save As, and save it to your desired location and name. You should be probably familiar with that by now. Give it a name. Now that you've saved your work, just open it up again and keep working. Repeat that save process often. Don't lose your work. Open your newly saved original document and select the master page. Again, we're back on the master pages because when you open it again, it will probably be set to pages again. So just change it to master pages. We want to set up the master page for the rest of your book. Now to add the master page numbers. Add a text frame panel in the center just below the bottom margin as shown. Mar just below the bottom margin, sorry, bit tongue-tied there, as shown. Both sides, centre the panels. See the little magnet up in the top right-hand side? Just make sure that's on, and then you can centre your panels down the bottom. 0 0.75 and 0 0.25. 0 0.75 width, 0 0.25 height. And do that for both sides. You'll see there's a hash sign in there at the moment. That's because I'd already set the page numbers in there. So in turn, tap to enter text in each one, but one at a time, of course. And with the cursor in the first text box, select document, then select insert, field, page numbers. When done, the hash sign will appear in the box. Set the font and size correctly. I've just used Baskerville regular 12 point there, fairly standard. Repeat for the second box. So you've got two pages visible there. You've got the little rectangles and page numbers are positioned in them. This is your master page now, complete. And you can see you've got the margins showing and the page number marker positions are shown ready to go. Don't forget to save your work. Now, sections next. Now we need to add page numbering sections. And you can see on the right-hand side, right at the bottom, 
there's the panel for sections. That's what we're going to change now. Adding numbering sections for the front copy, the story, and the back matter. Front matter, story, back matter. Now, the front matter usually starts or should start with what's referred to as a half title. That's on that page one. You can note we're on pages now. So, half title is simply the title. Nothing, no author, no publisher, nothing. That's on that first flyleaf of the book. So we need the first section prepared because the first section in this instance covers 14 pages of front matter. So make section one exactly the same as this. Start on page one. Continue page numbering. Well, no, that's off because there are no previous pages. Start page numbering at page one, which is the first page, the first physical page of this whole project. You can give the section a name if you like, but that's useful if you've got lots of sections. Not so important if you've only got two sections. The numbering style for the front matter is quite often lower case Roman numerals, one, two, three, and four showing there in Roman lowercase. Include on export? Yes, well, you want those to show up when your document is exported, so that's on. That's all there is to section one. You don't need to tell it how many pages you're going to do this to, just put that in as section one. Now, section two, you can see section one and section two are now showing in the sections column, sections panel, and you can see the pages are numbered there. So what we need to do is in that sections panel, you press the plus sign to add another section. And this is section two. And change the options now to those shown. Start on page 15. That's where chapter one physically is in this instance. Start on page 15. Continue page numbering. No, don't turn that on because it will continue right on from the last page that has front matter on it. So page, the page number under your chapter will be page 15. You don't want that. You want it, the story to start at page one. Again, you can give it a section name, and the number style in this section is plain one, two, three, four, so on, and include on export. Now we have the section complete. Let's add the front matter as we're putting in this book. Page one is your inner title page, often called the half page, and that's all there is to it. This is usually just the title by itself. Okay, so you've got that. Now, pages one to 14, let's step through these, and I won't go into a lot of detail because they're fairly self-obvious. Standard front matter pages. Now, the front matter is the material in the front of your book before the story starts. And in this case, other books is on that page. There are other books you've written. Not other books somebody else has written, but other books you've written. People like to know how many books you've produced. How many books in this series? What other textbooks have you written? What other fiction books have you written? Now, the next page you'll notice is on the right-hand side, and this should always be on the right-hand side. It's the title page the full title page, with author, publisher, <coughs> and any other print details that are necessary. If you're not sure, pull a few books off your shelf and have a look at what people are doing on their title pages. No harm in copying that. Now, the next set of pages contains the copyright and the dedication. Fairly straightforward. Now, next set of pages. <coughs> <laughs> Excuse me again. Next set of pages, the epigraph, and then the table of contents, which may run to more than one page. Remember, if you've got a lot of chapters in your book, it may well fill up that entire page and spill over to two or three more pages. You'll have to take this into account when you come to chapter one of your book, because chapter one should always start on the right hand side, a recto page.
is recto and verso, remember, the front and the back. Now, the list of figures and tables, left-hand side, and the forward on the right-hand side. Continued, the preface, left-hand side, and acknowledgements, right-hand side. Again, a couple more pages, introduction, and a prologue. Many books have prologues. Some do, some don't. Most seem to these days. Prologues have become very popular. Now, because this is such a long front matter section, we've got a second half title. So it's the same as the very first page of the book. You just put a half title there. No author, no publisher, just the title of the book. And then that's followed by chapter one. That's where your new page numbering starts. Remember the section you created? And if you look carefully there, you'll see page one is showing at the bottom. It starts on chapter one. Now that's the end of front matter. Chapter one begins your book. Back matter follows that. I haven't done the back matter because that's probably dragging this out too long. I've put a lot of front matter in this example. You may want to narrow it down, and that's, that's fine. Your title should always be on the right-hand side, the recto page. Your chapters should always start on the right-hand side, the recto page. If you've got 50 chapters in your book, every chapter starts on the right-hand side, or it should do. It's a convention, it's not a rule. Back matter will be things like an index and most importantly, a CTA, a call to action to buy your book list, the most valuable real estate in the book. People get to the end of your book and they see, oh, I love that story. Has this author written any more? And there, just as they turn the page, is an advertisement for the next book. Now that's really valuable advertising because the person's made it to the end of the book, they've loved the story, and they want to read the next one in the series. And that tells them all about it. So don't forget the back matter. That's a really important part of your book. So for now, that's it. I have other videos on this channel covering all the other things that relate to book production, such as book covers, uh, printing on KDP, uh, printing on Apple, things like that. There's lots of videos out there. And I encourage you to subscribe to my channel and take advantage of all the other videos. For now, this is the end of the exercise. So thanks for watching. I hope you find it valuable. Don't forget to subscribe to my YouTube channel and share the video with friends. They will thank you, I'm sure. We'll see you there.